It's the weekend. I've got my shortbread Scotty Dogs. Thanks for that, Mark. I've got my ginger beer with very cheap whiskey because obviously that would be a waste of whiskey otherwise in the ginger beer. One moment, please. Mm. Most refreshing. And I've got this very suspicious looking device that says 0 to 96 degrees uh, and has, could be Russian, could be Ukrainian. It, I, I'm not really sure. I'm not even sure what this uh, borderline is between Russia and Ukraine. But uh, that's where two of these devices came from. The reason I've got the shortbread tin here is because it's very good for putting things in when smoke has come out of them. Oh, oh God, the smell is just terrible. Not the shortbread smell, the smell of burnt varnish right now. Because uh, this emitted smoke last night. I was playing with it quite a lot. I was trying to get a good picture of it to post up so you guys could see what I was playing with. And then smoke wisps came out and I thought, before I go to bed, I'm just going to uh, put this in a metal tin just in case it's smoldering inside. The other device here, I ordered at the same time from the same supplier from the Ukraine. And it's a little uh, hydrom hydrom hydrometer, that's the name of it, hydrometer that you float in your uh, spirit and it tells you the percentage. And it's, it's notably, it's got this mark here in the 40% bit because I'm guessing this is for testing spirits to make sure that you know, you're know you you're not being shortchanged. And they do two versions. Well, they actually do three versions, but uh, the two notable ones are this one, which goes up to 90. Now, I, I, I always thought that it's kind of suggests 90 degrees. Is that actually 90 degrees proof? I'm not sure that relates to percentage. I should have maybe looked that up. But uh, the good news is that I dropped it into my bottle of vodka and whiskey and it went to the 40% uh, red line, which is what it should be. So that was uh, an interesting thing to try, but it has nothing to do with this video whatsoever. The item with this video is this rather intriguing thing that says... Uh, 127 to 220 volt electric gas lighter for kitchen gas stove igniter fire starter EU plug. And it cost... Uh, £8.76.16 and this came from the Ukraine. Um, I'm guessing it was po posted, uh, well the postage was from the Ukraine. I don't know if it was a Chinese seller in the Ukraine or it was a Ukrainian type thing. It's very appealing. Let me demonstrate what it does and hope, sm well I say hope more smoke doesn't come out. Sm smoke's good. But the gist is, you poke it and it's a rather loose fit. It says European plug, it's not a very tight fit. When you push the button, you can see the sort of spark in there. Uh, let me open this up and show you a bit more detail. If you unscrew this, and I think this might be an adjustment, and you slide this off, noting that this becomes live at mains voltage with not really much holding it together, when I do it now, you'll see... lots of sparks. Oh... Yeah, I'm waiting for smoke coming again, out again. Yeah, maybe I was using it quite a lot last night. But here's my guess what this is. It's a cooker igniter designed to light the gas. And my guess is that it's probably that metal arch with a coil, a solenoid coil, and then the spring-loaded plunger with a contact in the end. Now we notice that uh, this could be screwed into then, just make that sure that is unplugged because it is kind of, it does become live at mains voltage and this seems to be an adjustable contact. You seem to be able to adjust that. This is getting quite hot in use. Let's plug this in again. Hmm. I think there are two 40 volt supply maybe pushing this just a little bit. But I get the feeling that uh, this is connected to say live and the one connection of the uh, solenoid is connected to neutral. And I get the feeling that it really is just literally the spring with the plunger actually connected straight onto the other connection of the solenoid. So that init initially when you turn it on, that uh, spring-loaded plunger there, make sure it's unplugged, this spring-loaded plunger here uh, makes contact with the end. Uh, and then when you power it up, it, the magnetic attraction pulls it in, then it sort of fires back, and it just basically vibrates like a vibration contact with an inductor in series, the solenoid, and that's what creates the spark. So let's open it up. I uh, was going to run this until smoke came out of it, but then that would be red hot to open up. It does say 127 to 220B. Um, so our 240 volts, what is the voltage at the moment? Let's say, uh, oh, yes, I can test what the voltage is at the moment. 
I can plug in the hoppy and we can see what the voltage is. It's a cold night, everybody will have the heating on. It may have pulled the voltage in the local transformer down. It's 241 volts. Mm. This thing is stinking. It smells very hot and sort of windingy. So how am I going to get this out? How is this fastened in? I get the feeling that the pivot pin down here may actually also, as well as activating being the activating switch, it may also latch the whole mechanism in. Not sure. Can I push that in in some way? Oh, it does push in. Oh, that pin pushes right through. That's even better. Uh, I need something to poke that through with. I need a drill. Drills are perfect for pushing pins like this out with. Oh, look at that. That's very promising. Oh, yes. Right, drill back out of the way. Have I put the drill back in its side? No, I've not. There it goes. Stick the drill back in before I forget it. Right, let's uh, push this out and see what delights are inside. So there's a transformer. There's a sort of... What's that black? I have a horrible feeling that black stuff may actually be a plastic core that is now seeping out the sides because I've abused it. Oh, right, okay. So here is the mechanism. The mains comes in and goes onto those two contacts, and when you push the button together, one connection does indeed go right up to the end, and the other does connect onto the end of the coil. So how then does the other connection of the coil go on? I wonder if the spring is physically making a connection. Oh, you know, that's probably what it is. There's that pin going up to the end. Is there anything obvious here? Is that pin going to push out? Or is this... I'm going to break this at some point. The good news is that theoretically I could rewind this. Um, the other connection... I'm just trying to find where it is. This one's going on at this end. I would have thought the other connection might come off the other end, but I could be wrong. I'm not seeing anything obvious at the side here, so I'm guessing it might actually be just poked up the middle of that. Let's see if we can get this bit off. This is where it pings out completely. Oh, yes. There is a little uh, metal uh, thing coming up here. A little metal tube that is making the other connection, and that's what makes contact with this. It's a nail. It's a freaking nail. All right, so we've got a spring, a nail, uh, and that can go down in there, and that's making connection to one side of the coil. Uh, then it really is just this metal frame that is live at mains voltage uh, that's uh, in normal use. That's uh, a bit disconcerting because when you look at the uh, assembly that goes over the top and this thing that screws in, it's got this sort of hanging point that just is loose and theoretically that could come quite close to that metal in there if you screwed it down too far. But that just does screw that contact down. It's appealingly simple. I mean, that is just really super simple. Uh, I'm guessing this jams everything that broadcasts and radio frequencies for miles around. Let's uh, remove that a little bit before it, uh, before it gets in the way. Let's uh, adjust this contact. I'm guessing also the contact will adjust the ferocity of the sparking. Shall we plug this in then? Gingerly poke those connections down with things. Yes, we will. Ooh. Ah, you know what? It's not making a connection in the plug because it's such a loose fit. Oh, disappointing. Let's just let's just wiggle it loosely in the connection in, in the hope that I might make a make a brief contact. No, nothing's happening unless I've burst it. I may have burst it. That is a distinct possibility. I've burst it. Ah, oh, I've obviously broken one of the connections off, but that's not really surprising. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's how that thing works. And technically speaking, you could rewind it, although I guess the fact there's molten plastic coming out the side of this means it's probably not going to work very well, which is a shame, because uh, 
it was quite fun while it lasted, but really, if you get one of these, and I'm not sure I recommend you do get one of these, that's where the connection came off at the bottom there. If you do get one of these, uh, keep in mind that it's only, well, certainly on 120 volts, uh, it may last a lot longer, but on 240 volts, it's only good for brief activations. And also keep in mind that all a kid needs to do to get access to live metalwork is just unscrew the end and pull this off. It's very easy to get off. But that is, other than that, quite a cute little device. I like it.